Necromancy and Lichdom is a fantastic mod for Oblivion, which provides a satisfying necromancy system as well as a path to Lichdom. Both male and female lich forms are supported, and they look very good. The modder has done a brilliant thing because they've taken the lich model and somehow rigged it so that you can wear normal clothing and stuff, which is amazing and superbly done. To use the necromancy the mod provides, and start on your path to becoming a lich, you need to complete the quest in Anvil for Banneris Manor, called Where Spirits Have Lease. By the way, I think the Banneris Manor quest was one of the things that planted the seed, which later grew into my necromancy obsession. It's a great quest. I believe the mod increases the cost of the house from the vanilla price of 5,000 to 20,000. This may not be the case, it could be another mod in my list which causes that, but it's just something I noticed. Once you resolve the quest for Banneris Manor, you have the Tome of Unlife in your possession. Reading it will start a questline from the mod and grant you your necromancy starter spells. I love what the modder did here because it makes a lot of sense from a roleplay perspective and it's also immersive and not at all intrusive. You complete the quest and defeat Old Man Banneris, then you can decide to follow in his footsteps and become a lich yourself, or at least learn his necromancy tricks. Or if for some strange reason you're not playing a necromancer, you can just choose to not read the book, and the game will carry on as if there was no mod installed at all. How it works is each time you read the Tome of Unlife, you can progress to the next chapter if your magic skills are high enough. The relevant skills are Conjuration, Restoration, and Mysticism. You will know if it worked due to the pop-up which describes the skills and powers you unlocked. If at any time you forget how to do something, you can read the quest log. I was never left in a situation where I was scratching my head, wondering what to do. The first time you read the book, you'll be granted the Lesser Reanimate spell, as well as the Dismember spell and Fabricate Zombie spell. Dismember is a touch spell that you can use on a humanoid corpse, which turns it into a bunch of zombie pieces. Pick the pieces up, and then cast Fabricate Zombie. The pieces will be consumed, and a zombie corpse will appear. You can then use Lesser Reanimate upon it, and it will rise up as a zombie to serve you. Interacting with the zombie will cause it to follow you. Interacting with it again will tell it to wait, and it will loiter and wander around the area. The next chapter will teach you the Butcher spell and the Fabricate Skeleton spell. Butchering a humanoid corpse will cause a piece of meat to appear, and this piece of meat contains the bones, as well as human blood, bone marrow, and a bunch of other ingredients. You can use these extra ingredients for alchemy if you want, but they're also useful later on, so hang on to them if you can. For the moment, you can use the Fabricate Skeleton spell, which will use the bones to make a skeleton corpse. You can put weapons inside the corpse, and then when you cast Lesser Reanimate on it, a skeleton will spawn which uses these weapons. All weapons seem to work, whether they're enchanted or not, one-handed with shield, or two-handed, or a bow so you can outfit your army with whatever weapons you want them to have. These beginner minions are very weak. I run the Oscuro's Oblivion Overhaul mod, which ramps up the difficulty quite a lot, and I found that these minions would often die in one hit to most enemies. Fortunately, as your skills increase, the skeletons and zombies you're able to fabricate increase in quality. By the time you have skeleton guardians, you can get serious with your troops. Skeleton Guardians are very tough and do a great job. The minions you make are not hostile to normal people, which is good. It's not like Mysterious Bear's Epic Necromancy, where they attack everyone and everything. You do have to be careful of friendly fire though. I noticed that they can become hostile to NPCs, so I'd avoid taking them into town anyway, just to be on the safe side. A big factor seems to be your skeleton bowmen because they can accidentally shoot an ally, and then all hell breaks loose. You cannot ever stop a fight like this, it just spirals out of control. Either you allow your minions to kill the NPCs, or you kill your own minions to stop the fight. Either way, bad outcome. Sometimes they also decide to chase a deer a few hundred kilometers against your will. Nothing you can do about this either. None of these things I mention are the fools of the mod, it's like this of all mods that add minions. These are just the unfortunate quirks of follower AI. As you continue to learn from the Tome of Unlife, you will unlock the ability to create more types of undead, 
as well as other helper spells like one that allows you to harvest ectoplasms. Ghosts and wraiths can be made from ectoplasms. Shambles can be made from lots of bone and a few other ingredients gained from butchering corpses. And finally, you can make the flesh atronarch as well. I didn't try the atronarch because I don't like them very much, so I stuck with zombies, skeletons, wraiths, and shambles. After a while, once your conjuration, mysticism, and restoration are high enough, you'll be able to become a lich if you want to. Lichdom is optional, but very useful. As a lich, you'll have the following benefits. You gain Fortify Willpower 20, Fortify Intelligence 30, your Magicka Multiplier is fortified by 15, you get Disease Immunity, Frost Immunity, 25 Magic Resistance, Poison Immunity, Restore Magicka of 5, Water Breathing and Water Walking, and 25 Spell Absorption. All of these are permanent effects, of course. The drawbacks to becoming a Lich are very heavy minuses to your strength, agility, and personality attributes. Personality is most affected with a negative 50 modifier. You also become a seriously ugly bastard, which is maybe something you don't want. But you don't have to be running around town in Lich form, and indeed you cannot. People and guards will be hostile to you. But the good news is you have a spell which grants you the illusion of being human. While disguised, you look identical to how you looked before you became a lich, except you have strange dark eyes. Lich form has a separate bounty system to your human illusion form, so you can use it a bit like the grey fox's mask if you want, committing crimes and massacres in lich form while strolling peacefully through the town in illusion form. The lichdom process may not be 100% lore friendly, because I distinctly remember a necromancer from the Dark Brotherhood questline who had to wait 24 hours or something with the phylactery in his inventory as part of the ritual. But I honestly don't care. The way it's been implemented is nice, and I won't spoil the entire process because it'd take too long. There is a bug in the mod regarding the lichdom process though, and I mention it so that if you encounter it, you don't get stuck. At every stage of the process, be it crafting the hammer or the alembic or whatever, I would first make a fresh save before attempting the next step, just in case you get some strange issue. The issue I had was that when attempting to brew the poison required for the ritual, the game would crash. I read through the comments on the mod and noticed it was a problem others were experiencing as well. The fix for this problem is to have exactly the right amount of ingredients in your inventory for the poison. If you have extra, it will crash. Thanks very much to Nexus user TimTim63 for providing the fix. If you experience the crash, make sure you have no more than 5 bottles of blood, 1 ectoplasm, 1 mort flesh, and 5 nightshade in your inventory. If you're still experiencing the crash, you'll have to contact the modder. In the worst case scenario, you could probably spawn in the items via the console. I'm scoring this mod a 10 out of 10. It satisfies all my criteria for satisfying necromancy, and the lichdom process is great. That one bug aside, it was a very smooth and polished experience. I did encounter some other bugs, which I'll mention soon, but they weren't showstoppers. Before I get to that, I want to offer some constructive criticism of the mod. Nothing is perfect, and there's a few things missing here for the perfect experience. When you dismember a corpse, the zombie pieces get dumped near where the body was. On hills they can roll away and be hard to find, or get lost in tall grass, etc. Sometimes they maybe even clip through the ground and disappear. I don't know, but there were many times where I couldn't find the pieces. The way it works with butchering corpses is nicer, where a meat container is spawned with everything inside. I think it should work this way for dismemberment as well. There also needs to be a way to repair undead. As far as I can tell, the undead stay dead forever once killed, and you gotta go and kill more people and get more bones to make fresh ones. While this isn't terrible, it does result in you being completely minionless after big fights. One solution would be to provide a way to repair the undead. This could be via a spell that makes them get up again, or you could take the mysterious bear epic necromancy route, which lets you repair minions of pieces of bone or flesh. Another nice feature would be the leader system, 
which is also in Epic Necromancy. In that mod, there is a skeletal leader who you can tell your other minions to follow, and then he follows you. What this means is, is that you can tell your entire horde to stop just by telling the leader to stop, because they're all following him and not you. In this mod, you must visit each minion individually and say stop. Then when you're ready to go again, you have to visit each minion again and say follow. This becomes painful with large armies. Finally, this mod would benefit so much from a layer system like an epic necromancy. It's so awesome to find a ruin and turn it into your lair, complete with magical turrets and things, then having the mages guild come and invade it, etc. It doesn't have to be exactly like an epic necromancy, I'd actually appreciate a fresh take on lair crafting, but it would be a really nice feature to have. I think it's important to the experience of role playing a necromancer. Overall though, I really loved my time with this mod. It was clear, streamlined, intuitive, and also respectful of my time and sanity. Crafting requirements for minions were sensible and not exaggerated or painful. It wasn't like some mods where you must read five pages of mod description and you still don't know what the hell you're doing. At no point in time did I have to level all my magic skills to 100 and gather a collection of the most powerful endgame artifacts before climbing to the top of the white gold tower and nailing my scrotum to it at midnight before finally being able to use the stuff that this mod offers. This mod is fun, this mod is reasonable, and this mod is well designed and well executed. Thank you very much Shiogorath101 for making it. You've made me very happy, and you'll also make a lot of other people very happy. Now, the other bugs I found while playing. It is possible to cast lesser reanimate on a flesh container from the butchering process. I'm sure this is unintended. The meat rises up and behaves kinda like a minion would. I reloaded because I was afraid this would bug my game up. I encountered this while trying to reanimate a fabricated shambles and I missed and hit the meat container instead. It's also possible to cast greater reanimate, which should be used on fabricated shambles, on a lesser minion like a fabricated skeleton. This will cause the skeletal minion to be created, but it will be bugged. It cannot be told to follow and will walk aimlessly forever. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hang around if you want to see my mod list and also receive some general tips on Oblivion modding so you can get the best experience possible on a modern machine. I'm no expert when it comes to modding Oblivion, but I have done it long enough to have gone through the painful process of crashing and things not working, and I've been able to collect a sort of pool of knowledge that might help you out. The first thing you should do with Oblivion is install something called an ENB, which stands for Enhanced Natural Beauty. It's a wonderful thing made by some genius called Boris Vorontsov which appends an extra set of rules to the direct 3D drawing process used by many games. It's a post-processing enhancement and it improves graphics, but most importantly to me, it offers vastly increased stability. The problem with Oblivion is that it has some limitation, like it can only use a maximum of 2GB of your RAM, even if you have 16GB of RAM, and if this limit is exceeded, the game crashes. Exceeding the limit is really easy, by the way, Having a bunch of minions following you is a sure way to exceed it, as well as texture packs or whatever else. Modding the game in general will increase the RAM requirements and can crash Oblivion. I installed the ENB and I used an existing ini file that someone had prepared in the Nexus that tweaks it appropriately for Oblivion. I noticed that the game looked nicer, but it was also much more stable. Even if for some reason I was running no mods at all, I'd still use this ENB. The next thing to install is the Oblivion Script Extender. Most mods need it, and Necromancy and Lich needs it as well. As a rule of thumb, any kind of mod that does anything really cool requires it. After that, you can finally begin installing your mods, but unfortunately, it's complicated. Do not use Vortex or Nexus Mod Manager for Oblivion. It is guaranteed to cause you problems if you do this. I've been there, I've done that. For a very long time I manually installed everything. This works and is reliable, and I did it this way for a very long time, but removing anything but the simplest of mods that have been manually installed is basically impossible. For years I have been installing mods with a mixture of Rye Bash, 
and Oblivion Mod Manager. I found that Rai Bash can handle most things, but Oblivion Mod Manager handles some things better. If a mod author explicitly tells you to install the mod with Oblivion Mod Manager, I would follow this advice. After the stuff is installed, the load order is the next most important thing. I used to use BOSS for this because it's tailored for Oblivion, but I've recently found that Loot does a better job, at least for me. It also tells you if you've installed a mod but are missing a requirement. So sort the load order using Loot. Finally, if you use a lot of mods, or even if you only use a few mods, but these mods add spells and items, you must create a bashed patch using Rybash. I'm not super knowledgeable about what this really does, but to my layman understanding of things, it looks through the mods you have, and if it finds duplicate IDs, like two mods using the same ID for something, then it makes a new ID so that there is not multiple separate entities referencing the same IDs. If you don't, you'll encounter problems like an item may claim to be one kilogram, but you pick it up and you're over encumbered because it actually weighs 20. This is because the ID of what you've picked up is the same as some heavier object. This is an absolute nightmare and causes untold amounts of weirdness, broken mechanics, and worst case, crashes and corrupted saves. There's another emerging tool called Meta Smash, which is newer, and I tried it out. It's easier to use, but I don't think it works as well for Oblivion, so I don't recommend using it for Oblivion. For other things, it's probably okay. So if you use my mod list, please do everything I described, otherwise I can promise you, you will have a bad week. But with this mod list I'm currently running, and about, I don't know, I've been playing it for two weeks maybe, I haven't had a single crash, so it's solid. What I'm going to tell you next may be superstitious nonsense, but it's something I still follow. Do not use quick save, quick load, or load from auto saves. Apparently this can cause save corruption after some time. Only use fresh manual saves. I've even read once, somewhere in the forums during the dark time of trying to find out what the hell is wrong with this game, that the game automatically loading the last save when you die can also corrupt the save. So I'd recommend quitting the game when you die and loading it fresh. Pretty insane, huh? But sadly, you're better off just doing these strange things and not having corrupted saves, not having crashes to desktop, and being able to just enjoy the game. You gotta keep in mind, right? Oblivion is a pretty old game. And just like any old zombie that's a bit old, you raise him up from the dead, and he's grouchy. He hates life. He wants to die, and he'll oblige death very quickly. He will whine and moan and crash and do his best to fucking just be a god awful pain in the ass. Thanks again for watching, I've got more necromancy stuff coming soon.